There's an infinite number of universes out there. In many of them, there is a podcast by us. In one of them, it's good. Please enjoy. I love Kmart. It's such a great, great place to just go. I'm such a, like, sucker for- Do you have a gun to your head right now? Are you okay? No, no, I'm fine. I'm just a sucker for browsing. I don't buy anything at Kmart, but, like, if I go in there because I need, like, a simple thing, I'm like, well- just like I have to go through the whole store, <laughs> <laughs> looking at everything, um, and I just like I ended up over. I was with family to be fair, so we're over in like the kids section. I was just looking at some of the board games there, and there's like there's some there's some amazing board games out there that I've just board game technology has come a ways. I have to say, there were these two standout ones to me that I'm just like fuck. I I need to play these games. One was, it just, it's a thing you put in your mouth and it makes it so you can't close it. (laughs) And then it gives you heaps of challenges. What are you talking about? It gives you heaps of challenges. Like you have to do things with this thing in your mouth that forces your mouth open. And it's just like, try and whisper with your mouth open (laughs) or try and like eat food with your mouth open or try and like blow this candle out with your mouth open. And- you just drill everywhere. That's the game. <laughs> you just look like a total idiot. It's been incredible. Um, it's great. I want to play it. There was another one which was- I think they announced that one at E3. Yeah, they did. There was another one which was- I don't actually know what the context of this game, but all I saw was it was a tiny little baby, like a little like doll hand that I think you held with yeah. your normal hand, pulled the sleeve up so you just had this tiny hand, and that was the game. <laughs> just had this picture with a tiny hand. I- it's like do all these things. I don't. I didn't read what the things were, but I assume you have to like juggle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like do things you would do with your normal hand, but with the tiny hand. Oh my god! That was the board game. I love it. <laughs> that was one of the board games. Please buy uh, me one of these games. I will. I will buy both of these, and oh it can god. be a Christmas game. We can play it on oh, YouTube, <laughs> and everyone can watch. Okay. As we drib- drool everywhere with tiny hands. <laughs> but yeah. Hello and welcome to the But Yeah podcast with Eamon and Zeb. I'm Eamon. And I'm Zeb. And it's a very special day. Um, like last week and the week before were all special days. Um, I don't know if... Some might say it's this most special day. Some might say the most special day. Some might say it's the biggest day. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because this is really close to the solstice, which is the shortest day. At least for us. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's three weeks after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's close enough. Three weeks after is close enough for anything. Um, yeah. Nothing's wrong with spending three weeks doing whatever. I guess it's the biggest day over in America. Well, this is the biggest day. It's the biggest celebration of the year. Yeah. Where they celebrate this big day. Like, really, it's... But it's like a regular celebration. It's not big in the sense that it's like everyone's extra, like, woo! It's just a regular festival. Like, kind of d- put in a paint and then distorted really big and gets all pixely and over large. Like it's like that. <laughs> if you know what this day is, which I'll reveal in a moment, you would know that all the burgers are bigger, the pancakes are larger, everything's bigger at this festival. It's Paul Bunyan Day. We're celebrating America's favorite big boy from the early 1800s. Some would call him a cryptid. Yeah, he was um he was the first man to step into America, I think. From what I know of the history, um so he stepped into America and the locals were terrified of this giant man, this giant lumberjack, dressed appropriately, dressed nice and warm, because I guess it's cold up in the northern America, where I assume he lived. And then he just absolutely terrorized the countryside, <laughs> I assume. Ate all the livestock and crops. <laughs> and and then um, in his wake came, came um, cities. That, that's how that's how that's how it happened, right? That that's that's what he was. Well, I yeah, I guess cities had <laughs> cities had to come after Paul Bunyan because there was no way to supply enough food for him without a large population of people to work on the livestock. 
<laughs> um, so let me read a little bit off daysoftheyear.com. It may seem as though a great majority of the most popular folklore characters are evil predators who spend their lives hunting for their next victim. Wow. <laughs> like Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Well, I guess. I'm, I mean, I mean, yeah, Goldilocks is absolutely a villain. <laughs> Definitely. She was hunting for her next- She like broke an She like broke into their house and like yeah. ate all their food. I want some oats. I need some oats. <laughs> She's definitely a cryptid. Yeah. I remember that poem about Goldilocks creeping into your house at night. It's like, don't go to sleep because she comes to creep. Goldilocks <laughs> comes to eat your oats. Yeah. Like it seems like a regular like kid's fairy tale until that bit with the body horror and her head turns around all the way around. <laughs> Scuttles up the ceiling and out the window. <laughs> then the <laughs> oats. That's why it's like it's not recommended to keep oats in your house. <laughs> like Goldilocks is actually just an insect that eats all your shit. I'm pretty sure the moral of that story is kids eat the damn oats real quick before Goldilocks comes and eats them. <laughs> Or she'll come and eat them and you too and your dog. But have them too hot or too cold, I think. <laughs> yeah. Don't make your food just right. It's an excuse f- an excuse for parents to make the oats real shit. <laughs> Don't have nice things or Goldilocks will take it. Oh, you wanted oats that were the perfect temperature? Well, sorry, I want to keep you alive from Goldilocks uh-huh. coming in and consuming everything in the house. <laughs> um, but back to Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan, on the other hand, is the embodiment of the all-American lumberjack. Tall, strong, capable, and (laughs) good-natured. So we know this is a good boy. I guess he caused a lot of destruction by accident. (laughs) Do you think I'd anger people if I said that he looks more Canadian to me? Well, something that I've found is the most American things are Canadian. (laughs) I guess he's just just dressed warm, and he's probably from North America. Like, he doesn't look like he lives in the (laughs) South. Does he? I don't know. Is that offensive? I don't know. Do they wear flannel in the South? I don't think- Do they? I feel like they eat off flannel. Yeah. Like, they do, but they fold like they- You know, fold it up. I'm talking about, like, um, table spreads. Like, the pattern (laughs) on a table is usually- Looks like flannel. I don't mean they fold it up to eat it. (laughs) I mean, they fold up their clothes. Like, uh, they don't have a long sleeves of flannel. Like, not like the warm flannel looking (laughs) flannel. Like the cold looking looking flannel. I don't know. I wonder what fl- <laughs> just little balls of flannel. Oh. No. Mm. Delicious. Well, if you look at like a picnic basket from like the early old pictures of them, they look delicious. You mean those ones like the little ones they throw over their shoulder when they like leave? Just like dainty picnic baskets made of like wicker and then they have the flannel inside. Oh. Uh, that thing always looks delicious. I could eat a couple of them. I was thinking of a bindle. <laughs> a what? A bindle. You know a bindle? No. A bindle. It's like a stick you throw over your shoulder. It has a little bag of like a little flannel looking oh, bag. Oh, yeah. It, and it has little snacks in it for the journey. Wow, that has a name? Yeah, it's a bindle. It's not just food bag? Why did they ever do that? Now I think about it. <laughs> I guess we didn't have backpacks all the time. But like, why have it on a stick? Well. Like, wh- like what? What is the what is what was it also a weapon? I guess maybe it was also a spear. Well, maybe it was like a, a magical artifact that whenever you whatever you kill with the bindle fills the bindle bag. Maybe it's like a vacuum cleaner. It's my bag of holding. <laughs> you mean a bag? Like like a bag? <laughs> Can you show me a bag that isn't of holding? <laughs> a bag of it's not a very good bag if it's not. <laughs> yeah. A bag of emptying, a bag of <laughs> It's the opposite of holding. Dropping. A bag of dropping. So, yeah. Why was Paul Bunyan so big, though? Well, let me tell you. All right, here we go. Many years ago, Paul Bunyan was born in the northeastern American state of Maine. His mother and father were shocked when they first saw the boy. Paul was so large at birth that five large birds had to carry him to his parents. Oh, I was going to say, wouldn't the, I bet the mother was especially shocked. <laughs> When the boy was only a few <laughs> weeks old, he weighed more than 45 kilograms. That's that's pretty- that's a lot. How much do babies usually weigh? Nah, that's a pretty standard child weight, I think. <laughs> I don't- yeah, I don't know. One large child. Wait, how much was it? Kilogram- did you say kilograms or pounds? 45 kilograms. Why is it in kilograms? Wait, do Americans use kilograms? I don't know. I don't think they do. Why is this in kilograms? <laughs> I Wait, don't do know. They? <laughs> don't they use Ameripounds? I don't know. <laughs> 
As a child, Paul was always hungry. Mood. His parents needed 10 cows to supply milk for his meals. Oh, man. Before long, he ate 50 eggs and 10 containers of potatoes every day. Okay, hang on. What's with the units here? Why are potatoes measured in containers? <laughs> what is going on? Is Maine, is Maine different? Well, okay, so I've looked up where Maine, what Maine is, and it's absolutely the most northern state of America <laughs> outside of Alaska, I guess. Okay. So it's almost Canada. <laughs> So I feel justified in my perception then. But yeah. All right. Young Paul grew so big that his parents did not do to, did not know what to do with him. Once Paul rolled over so much in his sleep that he caused an earthquake. Jesus. Oh my god. This angered people in the town where his parents lived. So the government told his mother and father they would have to move him somewhere else. The government. The government finally <laughs> making a sensible decision on something. <laughs> hey, Bunions? This large man? This very large boy? Uh, I think in the interest of the people, can you move him somewhere else? But, like, where are they going to send him? To just another state where the government will just send him somewhere else? Another town. Paul's father built a wooden cradle, a traditional bed for a baby. His parents put the cradle in waters along the coast of Maine. However, every time Paul rolled over, huge waves covered all the coastal towns. So his parents brought their son back on land. In hindsight, that was a stupid decision. It was a stupid <laughs> decision. They took him into the woods. This is where he grew up. Wait, were they trying to abandon him at sea then? Were they trying to Moses him? Let's go. Let's just push him down the, the ocean. It feels like it. Someone else will have to raise him. But then it just went like it kind of subverted the whole Moses tale. <laughs> and instead of like washing down the river and getting raised by Egyptians... It just went, I'm going to wreck the coast. So the real question I have is, how big a boy do you need to make an earthquake? Because I feel like you need a pretty big boy. I think you need a pretty big boy. I'm pretty sure you need a very large boy. A larger boy than I've ever seen, at least. Larger than you could make a cradle for is what I'm worried about. I don't know. There was more wood back then. Yeah, I guess there was more wood back then. <laughs> As a boy, Paul helped his father cut down trees. Paul had the strength of many men. He was also extremely fast. He could turn off a light and then jump into his bed before the room got dark. Okay, hang on. So he's faster than light. He's faster than light. <laughs> what? <laughs> is this the first superhero? Is, is this he's the Flash? The, but Big Flash? The Big, big flash. flash. Flash colon big. <laughs> um, music plays in the story, by the way. Okay. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. <laughs> There's a story of a very large boy. His name is Paul. Ba -da -ba -ba. He causes earthquake floods and is faster than the speed of light. One day it had started to snow. The snow covered Paul's home and nearby forests. However, this snow was very unusual. It was blue. The blue snow kept falling until the forest was covered. Okay, you've, you've actually got my interest story. I'm really curious. Is this the first villain of this superhero story now? The snowmaker? Blue s Oh, it's Heisenberg. <laughs> Paul put on his snowshoes and went out to see the unusual sight. As he walked, Paul discovered an animal stuck in the snow. It was a baby ox. Paul decided to take the ox home with him. He put the animal near the fireplace. After the ox got warmer, his hair remained blue. Why- I need to know about what the- why is the snow blue, though? The suspense. The suspense. The suspense is growing. Paul decides to keep the blue ox and name him Babe. Babe grew very quickly. One night, Paul left him in a small building with the other animals. Those other animals must have been terrified. <laughs> the next morning, the barn was gone, and so was Babe. Paul searched everywhere for the animal. He found Babe calmly eating grass in a valley, with the barn still on top of his back. Babe followed Paul and grew larger every day. Every time Paul looked, Babe seemed gro to grow taller. So it seems that whatever experiment caused Paul Bunyan to exist... Also is causing this ox to exist and has some link with the blue snow. Yeah, this blue snow, they still haven't got back to that. Do you reckon it's really snow? Do you reckon it's it's actually just a magic powder? Maybe. Maybe this was when Nikola Tesla was around. Right. And doing his electricity experiments. 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 The blue the blue yeah. Oh no, my big powder. <laughs> Oh no, my the blue escaped, not the blue from my electricity project. That's the most important one. 
It's the most important ingredient in electricity. Fortunately, they've got better at that process, and now they keep the big inside the electricity. But <laughs> it has an interesting effect on bi- on the biology of living creatures. Makes them faster than light. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. In those days, much of North America was filled with thick green forests. Paul Bunyan could clear large wooded areas with a single stroke of his large sharp axe. So that's why deforestation. Well, he is faster than light. So I can see how that would work. No wonder very quickly we lost all of our forestry. (laughs) Yeah. Paul Bunyan, deforester. Deforested the earth. Paul taught Babe to help with his work. Babe was very useful. For example, Paul had trouble removing trees along a road that was not straight. He decided to tie one end of the road... He decided to tie one end of the road to what remained of a tree in the ground. Paul tied the other end to Babe. Babe dug his feet in the ground and pulled with all his strength until the road became straight. What? What? Hang on. That's that's not how- That's not how any of this works. Are roads different in America? (laughs) Are your roads (laughs) something else? Is this like a boiled peanut situation where I don't know what that is and then you explain it and I'm like, what is happening here? Yes, because here roads are dug into the ground. (laughs) Here we build our roads in the ground. Are these like some sort of crazy um, above ground roads? What madness is this? Are these bridges everywhere? Are these like Looney Tunes roads that are like rolled out on top? (laughs) Music plays. And here's a story about a boy and an ox. In time, Paul and Babe, the blue ox, left Maine and moved west to look for work in other forests. Along the way, Paul dug out the Great Lakes to provide drinking water for Babe. Yeah, it doesn't give a shit about the humans. <laughs> That's not nothing to do with the humans. They settled in a camp near the Onion River in the state of Minnesota. Ew. Onion River? The Onion River. Stink River. Because it makes you cry? Like I don't know. It's very, very acidy. I don't know. Someone dropped a bunch of onions in there, I guess. My onions. No, now this will my... forever be the Onion River. <laughs> my... <laughs> No, my big shipment of onions spilled into the sea. (laughs) Paul's camp was the largest in the country. The camp was so large. I'm waiting for this blue powder, man. (laughs) They haven't come back to the blue. They never wrapped. They never talked about it. They're like a bad TV series. It's clearly going to be an important plot arc in the later seasons. Keep going. (laughs) I want to hear where it comes up. The camp was so large that a man had to have one week's supply of food when walking from one side of the camp to the other. All right. That's pretty inconvenient (laughs) if the whole point of the camp maybe is to produce food, I guess. Yeah, because it sounds like they're just consuming it. I think I actually think the camp was mainly just for deforestation, though. Yeah. So food wasn't really a problem. Maybe. Paul decided to get other lumberjacks to help with the work. At that point in town, I guess that's just a, just saying it's a really big city, which is pretty crazy back then. Because to get across the city is like a it's a it's a big walk, really. Yeah, like it would probably take like a week's worth of food to get from one side of Sydney to the other. Because you want because you always want a snack. Yeah, like Legend of Zelda running through the burning <laughs> yeah, yeah. hell pit fire of Sydney in summer. Maybe that's what it means. It was just like a really inhospitable inhospitable place, and you had to constantly restore health with watermelons. <laughs> Um, I expected this to be more brief. How much longer it is? I didn't expect this to be the Iliad. The Ballad of Paul Bunyan. Yeah, I didn't think this would be Isaac Asimov's Paul Bunyan foundation. Quick, just summarize the last half. All right, music just, plays. Just it. Bah, bah, da, da, <laughs> um, Sourdough Sam, my favorite character, made bread from everything. No, he made everything from sourdough. He made everything into bread? No, he made everything from sourdough. Oh, that sounds like a dangerous thing when there's a big boy in town. <laughs> Which, fun fact, sourdough, a substance used in making sourdough bread. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Facts of the day. Every Sunday, Paul ate his hotcakes. He made these giant pancakes so large it took five men to eat one. Um, Paul usually had ten of these big things. What a greedy fucker. Uh, something about Paul not being good at maths, so he gave the job to a man called Johnny Inkslinger. Why don't we hear more about him? He sounds like a it sounds like a superhero. It sounds incredible. What's you reckon his power is? He just squirts ink. <laughs> 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 this is the original Avengers, and we are witnessing them all come together. <laughs> um, 
the camp was also home to Sport, the reversible dog. <laughs> so we've got we've got a big man with, who's faster than light. We've got his giant ox that's blue and has imbued the power of blue snow. Yep, we have. Um, um, we've got the man who can make bread anything out of bread. <laughs> Sourdough Sam, ink ink squirter, and what was the last one? <laughs> The spot, uh, sport, the reversible dog. Is that real? <laughs> One of the workers accidentally cut sport in two. The man hurried to put the dog back together, but made a mistake. He bent the animal's back the wrong way. Jesus Christ. However, that was not a problem for sport. He learned to run on his front legs until he was tired. Then he turned the other way and ran on his back legs. <laughs> this is horrifying. Is, is this more of a Disney story and this is the animal companion? I guess that's probably the, the ox, unless that has a speaking part. God, I... This... And also, this worker who put the dog together upside down. Yeah, it's, it's just irresponsible. I guess he was in a rush. Yeah, I mean... I know we all have it's like a, quick, a quick, job put to the do, do, but- put, put the dog back together. Quick, grab him, put him back together. And he's like, put. He's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, bloop. No, I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because the way this is described, this dog, like the back half of him is upside down. Yeah. Oh. Huh? So it's like front legs, th- and then the back legs are like. I was thinking more like the head and the tail were just on the wrong spot. The back legs are like that, sticking up. And he runs on his front legs like a person. And then when he gets tired, he flips around. <laughs> Clearly, this dog isn't made out of regular matter. <laughs> He's probably made out of sourdough. I, re- I assume they're all. this all goes back to the blue powder wizard that we're going to learn about soon. <laughs> <laughs> Music plays. And now the story of a reversible dog and the sourdough man who makes everything out of bread. Um, big mosquitoes were a big problem. Just read the first line of every <laughs> paragraph that's left. So big mosquitoes, and then Paul always gave Babe the blue ox a 35 kilogram piece of sugar when he was good. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> when winter came, Babe had trouble finding enough food to eat. Oh, no. Oh, no. He made Luckily, huge- there's this whole town made of bread. <laughs> is that where this is going? <laughs> no, you don't even know. <laughs> What? I gotta read this paragraph. Babe had trouble finding enough food to eat. Snow covered everything. The old blacksmith solved the problem. Do you want to guess how he solved the problem? Of like him being hungry? Yeah, there wasn't enough food to eat for Babe. Do you want to know how he solved that? Okay, he solved the problem by turning Babe into a... Nope, wrong. Anything you were going to say, forget about it. You would not have guessed this. The old blacksmith solved the problem. He made huge green sunglasses for the the ox. When Babe wore the sunglasses, he thought the snow was grass. Before long, Babe was strong and healthy again. What is this story? I think that makes sense. Clearly the blacksmith's power. The blacksmith was like, oh, the problem is your, your big old ox dog isn't eaten. Let's make it think the snow is food and then it'll eat that. It'll be as big and strong. They tricked this ox into thinking the the snow was grass, and then it got and strong. It, and, and it worked. And it worked. Power of placebo, people. <laughs> Homeopathy. Homeo- homeopathic grass. <laughs> One year, Paul's camp was especially cold. Uh, when the men spoke, their words froze in the air. Uh, Paul Bunyan and Babe left their mark in many areas. Was this snow that the ox ate blue snow? Did it say that it was blue snow or was it just regular snow? No, it was just regular snow. God. They never come back. I don't think they can. Okay. On the edge of my seat about this special snow. I won't tell you whether they come back to it so that you're not um, disappointed yet. <laughs> okay. Paul Bunyan and Babe left their mark in many areas. Some say they're responsible for creating all the deforestation in the all of America. <laughs> That's how I sum up that. Oh, um, and then Babe the Blue Ox died in South Dakota. One story says he ate too many hotcakes. Paul buried his old friend there. Today, the burial place is known as the Black Hills. Oh, wow. Oh, man. So, is Paul Bunyan still alive? So, this ox survived perfectly fine on snow for many, many a year. But then Paul was like, hey, let's give him some hot... Let's give him lots of hot cakes. I want to see how many you can eat. Keep eating, boy. (laughs) Another fresh plate for the boy. (laughs) <laughs> my ox needs hotcakes. More hotcakes. Oh no, my ox looks real sick. Oh man, he's not looking good. You can finish it, ox. You can do it, babe. Finish that last bite. And then 
unfortunately, t- tragically and unexpectedly, Babe the Ox passes away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was a different world once, wasn't it? Yeah. Whatever happened to Paul Bunyan? There are lots of stories. Some people say he was last seen in Alaska or even the Arctic Circle. Another tradition says he still returns to Minnesota every year. It says Paul moves in and out of the woods, so few people ever know that he is there. Except that he deforested them all, I guess, so that he can't <laughs> hide anymore. <laughs> Music plays. Really? Now the story of a man and a pig that he fed to many pancakes too, and we never got back to the blue snow. You have just heard the story of Paul Bunyan. Your narrator was Eamon. Join us again next week for another American story. So I think this is more of like the old... Because I was reading... I read Neil Gaiman's North, Norse mythology book. Norse mythology book. So it was all like Loki and Thor, like the actual legends, right? And most of the book is like, this all already happened. This already happened. But then the last story, which is like the end of the world, hasn't happened yet. And there's like, so there's a big gap of time. So what's happened with this Paul Bunyan tale is that that's already happened. Paul Bunyan's off sleeping somewhere. Okay. Hiding behind one tree. But what yet to happen <laughs> is the rest of the story with the fucking blue wizard that made all the blue snow <laughs> and is clearly doing something that we, why, that's the story I want to hear. I mean, he's probably a scientist, but I mean, that time it's probably a blue wizard. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was Nikola Tesla. This story originates around that time. <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. Nikola Tesla had a brother called Paul who got trapped in the <laughs> lightning beams and got real big. <laughs> and he sent him out into the world um, and he grew up. And then at some point, Nikola Tesla was experimenting with lightning again and he hit the atmosphere and it called, caused this snow and that hit a pig. And the pig got real big. The pig ox. <laughs> the, yeah, pig ox. Same thing. <laughs> Very different. Four legs, fur, and a snout. Same thing. Yeah, all right. That's, that's true, I guess. <laughs> um, but it doesn't explain the man who could make anything out of bread. <laughs> no. Well, I guess the, the, the snow from the lightning storm that activated the, the chaos ions that yeah. fell down and turned everyone into these powers, I guess. Like it gave all this generation of people, like one guy gave a blacksmith the power to make sunglasses <laughs> This whole thing is just making different coloured sunnies and they change people's, like, actual perception. Yeah, that man, Eric Sunglasses Hut. <laughs> and that and that man's descendants went on to be Specsavers. <laughs> <laughs> the only glasses company or something. You know, they're all... All of their descendants are, like, modern conglomerates, like the Bread Kingdom, which everyone knows still exists. There is a huge, like, monopoly of sunglass companies. Like, one company is pretty much all 50 brands. Yeah. It's wild. Even, like, the cheap brands. They, it's just... And then they also own the optometry. I don't know how true this is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I probably shouldn't comment. I, I'm, I half know this from, like, a YouTube video. <laughs> but probably there's a, there's a, there is an underbelly of corruption weaving through the one glasses stealing, industry. Stealing eyes. Company. Stealing yeah, your eyes. It's all a play from eventually to steal your eyes. Yeah, like first they get you to come in for gla- like an eye test for free. And then they get you to come in to get some glasses. And then they get you on to um, um, contacts. And then they get you on to du- double contacts where they put them inside your eye. And then they put you in the eye sucking machine. <laughs> and then they're <laughs> like, oh, we need to take your eyes out to get these deluxe contacts in. We need to clean them. Yeah, that's exactly. the problem. Yeah, you need to clean your eyes. They're going to get all the eyes, much like the Tooth Fairy. They're the, actually the Eye Fairies. And they're going to rebuild their Dark Lord, the Pillar of Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, he can see all things and, and, and bathe the world in darkness. So, what, what is your favorite thing about Paul Bunyan on this special day? I mean, he didn't eat that bread man's kingdom. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty <laughs> nice of him. I would have just ate all of that bread if I was like a big boy and they were like, here's a whole bread land. If, like, if I was him, I probably would have just eaten the bread man in hopes that I would get <laughs> satisfied forever finally. But what if the bread man was actually like a worthy foe and it would have ma- he would have made him into bread? Yeah, probably. Or if he actually attacked, he would have made a bread man big enough to fight Paul Bunyan. Man, why <laughs> didn't this story happen? <laughs> Could like all these people like he makes a heap of bread based vehicles. Could sourdough Sam make a bread man so big even Paul Bunyan couldn't eat it? (laughs) 
These are the questions plaguing our youth these days. He makes a heap of gingerbread men, and they all combine to make a giant man. This is terrible. And then he, and then they run away. And they're like, you can't catch me. I'm the big bread man. <laughs> I think my favorite thing about Paul Bunyan is that he shares initials with our favorite hero of the, the modern era, Paul Blart, who's <laughs> just there keeping the peace. Maybe Paul Blart mm. keeps Paul Bunyan in the shadows. Maybe he's actually Paul. He is the same person. Just now. Maybe Paul Blood is Paul Bunyan's small son. Maybe. Yeah. It would make a lot of sense. Speaking of Paul Blood, let's t- I think it's time for us to hop on the Segway and scoot on over to the ad zone. Oh man, I'm sick of all these snack shapes. Well, I think you're in luck. Welcome to Sourdough Sam's Snacking Emporium, <laughs> where we have a big bag of bread-based products. Do you do you like do you like burger men? Do you like burger people? I do. Well, that's horrible. Why don't you eat real people? Why not eat all the furniture but bread? Wow, I love it. <laughs> Instead of burger men, burger chairs, just like Grandma used to make. <laughs> burger desks. I'm gonna study quick. B- burger, burger washing machine and fridge. Time to get some work done, but first a quick snack. Crunch, strunch, strunch, scrunch. <laughs> feel, feel like Paul Bunyan. Eat all the f- eating all these f- <laughs> furniture. <laughs> the official snack of the Paul Bunyan Museum. The, the chip bag looks like a house, and it's just full of random furniture. Just all of these all mixed up in it. There's one burger man trying to eat him. Uh, that'd be that'd be pretty horrible. Paul, you won't be a hero of America if you eat the one guy. There's also trees. <laughs> eat all the trees. Uh, eat eat the big a big house a house snack house size snack. Open that up. Eat it. I want a snack that makes me feel like a big boy. Welcome back. Um, that's not how I usually do it. That's way more energetic. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. We have a number of things to talk about this week. Uh, here a on big the big number here on the but yeah not podcast really. colon late night experience too. <laughs> um, it's time to jump right in. So let me tell you your first topic, Zeb, and it's what did you do this week? Uh, it's, oh, I love this game. It's my favorite game. Uh, what did I do this week? Oh, oh, you know, I have... See, that's the thing with the game is no one ever knows what they did this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, hey, justify your life. <laughs> that's what that question is. <laughs> like, yeah. I uh, mean, it's a pretty tricky question. Like, I might as well ask you what you did four weeks ago. Hmm. Yeah, ask that instead. Yeah, like, what did you do four weeks ago? Oh, just be- I was just drawing. <laughs> oh, nice! Just drawing. I got a. I got a new. I got a new super fancy drawing machine. Yeah. Oh yeah. But now that you reminded me of the cost of it, I hate it again. <laughs> <laughs> My heart. Nah, it's great. I. I definitely. I can't recommend it to people because it's. <laughs> but a device <laughs> like it, I d- people should totally try it. Sam bought a big old pad of paper that costs like too many dollars. It has like a hundred pages in it at least. I bought some. Ex- I bought some expensive paper. Let's just leave it at that. No, I bought a Wacom a Wacom computer screen. It's delicious to draw on. It feels like I'm drawing on paper. Whoo! Yeah. Oh yeah. But now that you reminded me of the cost of it, I hate it again. <laughs> <laughs> My heart. No, it's great. I I definitely. I can't recommend it to people because it's <laughs> but a device like it, I d- people should totally try it. Um, no, it's fun. It's got a stupid glove that I wear as well, which is only like it's kind of like the opposite of an archer's glove, where it only covers the two other two front fingers, I guess, so you don't yeah archer or your fingers off. But it covers the other two fingers with like a cleaning stuff, so you can clean the surface as you draw. And if you combine those two gloves, you have one whole glove, which I think. It's just such a cool concept because <laughs> they're two opposing things. So what if you and an archer high-fived? We might accidentally combine our hands. <laughs> like, Or just the gloves will get caught. I don't know. 
I can imagine like a horrible like thing, like you and an archer are like hanging out at a club and then you both take the wrong bag home, but you happen to have like the same looking bag and you both, you get to the drawing range and he gets to the archery range. <laughs> yeah, and you like, happen to have the same looking bag shaped yeah. like a giant bow. <laughs> <laughs> My tablet is very inconveniently shaped, but I really like it. But yeah, they go to pull out their glove or, for the competition. Or his bow is tablet shaped. <laughs> oh, you mean just the glove. It's the case for the glove, like a suitcase. Oh, yeah, I guess. Which you open up tsh, and there's just the one glove in there. <laughs> Fresh. Yeah, that's, yeah. you just got to keep it clean. <laughs> but yeah, you get to your drawing tablet and you go to put on the glove. You go to put on the glove for your live stream. And it's like three thirty seconds until starting time. Everyone's relying on you to be at peak performance. You only have the wrong part of the glove. And so you're just making a mess of this screen. I've got to draw the other way or something. Yeah. And scratch the screen up with the big lever glove. In the meantime, the archer is at the archery range and they pull out their glove to keep their fingers safe. And they've got this weird ass <laughs> drawing glove. And they're like, what is this? Just pull the... I assume they just pull the bow back and their fingers immediately come off. I don't know what the gloves are for. I assume for that. <laughs> what a mess. The gloves that keep your fingers on. Yeah. Oh, no, my fingers. <laughs> they fall off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Ar- archery. You never use the out from your story of... So that's like ending it quickly and saying, so what have you been doing? Oh, what have you been doing? No, I'm not doing it now. You didn't think to. <laughs> You messed up. You made I'm a mistake. I'm less cruel. I don't want to put that Tell horrible me. question on you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I think we're good. Um, thanks for listening to the show. This has been the But Yeah Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at But Yeah Pod, where we just sort of chat to other indie podcasts and release our episodes and things like that. Um, you can find my new podcast, which I'll get Zeb on to at some point when I find the time <laughs> to schedule him in. One Letter Better, which you can find at OLB Pod. It's a podcast about wordplay and trying to make things good and failing, usually. Usually. On the very first that, episode, oh. we talked about meat for 20% of the episode. I mean, that sounds about normal for our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, it got. It- I mean, we literally talked about Neapolitan Meat Tub. <clears throat> Yeah. For, I think, at least half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anything you need to add to the end, Zeb? Have a, have, we, we love you guys. <laughs> have, a, have a good time. Have a nice, have a nice week. <laughs> we love you. En- we're sorry. We're sorry. Um, enjoy Big Boy Day. <laughs> I, we didn't actually talk about how we'd celebrate it. Um, eat a big chair made of bread, probably. Not out of wood. Probably. I guess. <laughs> I'm going to eat a big burger. Eat, eat the biggest thing you can find, ideally food. Make make Paul Bunyan pancakes. It's just a whole thing of pancake mix put into the pan. Yeah. Find the blue wizard who clearly caused a lot of trouble in our world. Yeah. Um, so thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Wow, that was a good story. Good work. (laughs) If you say so.